The INFJ, often dubbed as the rare unicorns of the personality types, might feel like they're playing a game of social Tetris where the pieces just don't quite fit. Blame it on their deep thoughts, a radar for authenticity sharper than a samurai sword, or an introverted nature that craves more me-time than your average Netflix binge-watcher. Society's love for small talk and surface-level connections can leave these empathetic souls feeling like they've crash-landed on a planet that speaks a different emotional language. Throw in their penchant for idealism, a knack for seeing the world through kaleidoscopic lenses, and an allergic reaction to anything resembling injustice, and you've got a cocktail of traits that sometimes makes them feel like they're dancing to a beat only they can hear in a world that grooves to a different tune. Yet, Despite their independent nature, some may yearn for companionship and acceptance. So I decided to put together a guide on how to fit in as an INFJ. Deep thoughts and surface hide and seek. As an INFJ, sometimes it may feel like you're playing hide and go seek with your true self. You've got these deep thoughts and a sensitivity radar that's on overdrive. It's like having a secret treasure chest of emotions but you're hesitant to open it up, worried it might be a bit too much for others. Well, guess what? Holding back and hiding behind a mask isn't the answer. Sure, deep thoughts can be like bringing a gourmet meal to a potluck. Not everyone might be ready for it. It's that fear of overwhelming others with your unique blend of emotions and reflections. You start thinking, maybe I should tone it down and keep things light. But here's the scoop. Suppressing your true self is like trying to fit a giraffe into a suitcase. It just doesn't work, and it's not fair to the giraffe, uh, you. Your deep thoughts are not a burden, they're more like a superpower. It's like having a magical wand that can make connections that others might miss. So, why hide it? Imagine having a treasure chest, and instead of showcasing the jewels, you lock it away. That's what happens when you suppress the real you. You're keeping the good stuff hidden. You don't have to overshare, just dip your toes and see who's willing to wade in with you. When you start embracing your authenticity, you create a vibe that attracts people who appreciate the real deal. Sigmund Freud's Trio Ever felt like you're juggling three personalities? Welcome to the Freudian Trio, the Eid, Ego, and Superego. It's like having your own internal debate club, but instead of arguing about what movie to watch, they're deciding how you navigate the world. So, let's break it down and find harmony in the symphony of your inner trio. Picture the Eid as the mischievous kid inside you, always craving immediate pleasure and satisfaction. It's like the rebel in you that just wants to have fun without thinking about consequences. Embrace it. Let your wild side out to play, but maybe not at the office party. Now, onto the ego, you, your diplomatic negotiator. This part is all about finding balance between your desires, the Eid, and the realities of the world. It's like the friend who suggests a compromise between pizza and salad for dinner. Embrace your ego, it's the glue that holds your wild side and your responsible side together. Last but not least, the superego, the voice of reason and morality. It's like having a wise elder in your head, guiding you to make choices aligned with your values. Embrace your superego, it's the part of you that helps you resist the urge of letting intrusive thoughts win. Now that you've met your trio, it's time to find harmony. Embrace your true self by recognizing and appreciating each part. Allow your E to express itself, let your ego negotiate the dance between impulse and reality, and listen to your superego's guidance in navigating the moral maze of life. Living in a world with societal expectations can be like dancing the tango with your inner trio. You don't have to silence them, instead, let them lead the dance together. Acknowledge that societal norms exist, but don't let them drown out the beautiful symphony within you. Balancing your inner trio is the key to being true to yourself while waltzing through the societal ballroom. Avoid the good kid trap. Ever felt like you're caught on a tightrope between being the good boy or the rebel? It's like society hands you a script, and you're expected to play either the goody two-shoes or the wild child. But hold on, fellow tightrope walker, there's a sweet spot between the extremes where the real magic happens. Being labeled the good kid has its perks. You're dependable, responsible, and the go-to for cookie jar reaching. But it can also feel like wearing a straight jacket, too tight, too restricting. On the flip side, the rebel gets the thrill of breaking the rules but might find themselves in a constant game of tug of war with consequences. Now, here's the secret sauce, finding the middle ground. 
It's not about being a goody two-shoes or a wild renegade. It's about embracing both sides like a perfectly blended smoothie. Picture it as being a good-natured rebel or a rebellious do-gooder. The middle ground is where you get to be authentically you without being confined by society's labels. Release the pressure of fitting into society's neatly labeled boxes. Embrace the quirks, the mischief, and the responsible choices all in one delicious cocktail. It's the space where you can dance freely between responsibility and rebellion, creating your unique flavor that defies easy categorization. Society might have a checklist for what a good boy or a rebel should be, but guess what? You don't have to follow that script. Instead, craft your own narrative. You're not an actor playing a role. You're the director of your life's movie. Finding the middle ground is like hitting the play button for your authentic self. So, embrace your inner maverick, break free from the good kid trap, and enjoy the freedom of being authentically you. It's not about conforming or rebelling. It's about finding the rhythm that makes your heart dance. That's where the magic truly happens. A philosopher's wisdom words of balance. Ever stumbled upon a piece of wisdom that felt like a compass guiding you through life's labyrinth? Here's something from a wise religious philosopher dropping some truth bombs that resonate through the ages. A nugget that's pure gold. It goes, be strong but not rude, kind but not weak, humble but not timid, and proud but not arrogant. Let's break it down, shall we? Strength is a superhero cape we all wear, but there's no need to turn into the Hulk. Flex those muscles when needed, but remember, true strength lies in kindness and respect. You can be assertive without bulldozing through others' feelings. Kindness isn't a weakness, it's a superpower. It's like offering a hand instead of a fist. Being kind doesn't mean you're a pushover, it means you understand the strength and empathy. It's the small acts of kindness that echo the loudest. Humility is a quiet strength, not a sign of timidity. It's acknowledging your worth without turning it into a grand parade. Remember, a tree laden with fruits bends, while an empty one stands tall. Humility is where growth finds its roots. Hold your head high, but keep your feet on the ground. Pride isn't a bad thing when it's not riding on the chariot of arrogance. Celebrate your achievements, but remember, the journey is just as important as the destination. Apply these words practically. Picture them as a toolbox for navigating the complexities of daily life. When faced with challenges, let these words be your guiding lights, steering you towards a balanced response, be like water, adapt and flow. In the immortal words of the legendary Bruce Lee, be like water. It's not just a phrase, it's a philosophy, a guide to navigate the twists and turns of life's river. So let's break it down and see how being like water can be your superpower. Water doesn't resist, it adapts. It takes the shape of its container, flows around obstacles, and finds the path of least resistance. Similarly, in the dance of life, adaptability is your secret weapon. Embrace change, adjust your sails, and navigate the currents with grace. Water doesn't apologize for being fluid, and neither should you. Be unapologetically yourself, allowing your essence to flow naturally. Fitting into rigid molds is like trying to freeze water. It's against your nature. Let your authenticity flow, creating your unique river in the vast landscape of existence. Why fit in when you're born to stand out? Authenticity thrives in fluidity. Water reflects the sky, mirrors the surroundings, and sparkles with its true nature. Similarly, your authenticity shines when you allow yourself to adapt without losing your core identity. It's not about conformity, it's about showcasing your true colors in different lights. Life's journey is a series of waves, some calm and serene, others turbulent and challenging. Be like water, ride those waves with resilience. Don't fear the storms, instead, Become the surfer who conquers the waves with a balance of strength and adaptability. Conclusion Your tribe awaits. Flow, don't force. Fitting in is overrated anyway. Keep being your thoughtful self and trust in your lonely. Your tribe will come, those who vibe with your frequency, that is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.